Sean, tell the truth for posterity. If you can't tell the truth, don't say anything. Let people find the truth on their own because people love what we did and they want to know how it happened. They want to know about it. Your documentaries, they're all fantasy, fairy tale, Disney. Your interviews, they don't tell the truth. You don't celebrate the workers that worked really hard, that made the ideas happen, including those fantastic young interns from Mel Love, the very first intern, to, to uh, uh, Marlon Marcel, to all the other ones in between that did great work. You never celebrate those people. You only do documentaries that talk about you and you being the person that did this on the first day and then tied everything up on the seventh day at the end of the week and said you will rest. You're not God. It took a team of people to make this happen. It took brilliant black young minds to come together to make this thing happen. And when you do this solitary thing and don't mention people's names and don't celebrate those people, you throw the light off the, the magnitude of the gift that they gave you, the gift of creativity that put a light on your artists that helped us to shine around the world. I think that's whack, bro. It's the wackest thing. That's why I'm talking now and making sure I give credence to people who are out there mentioned, the people who were never mentioned. Five documentaries on you, bro, and no one gets to know really at the end of the day how Bad Boy happened, how it started, what really happened. That Joe interview, Fat Joe, is a cover-up for what really happened. He wanted us to be in L.A., and I went along with it. I helped to cut the checks. I got the team out there. We had people's children with us in LA. The intern team that we had, they had mothers and fathers. I called some of those people and asked if their people can come with us. I was diligent like that. Even though the kids might have been 20, 21, I'm taking them clear across the country. So I, you're my responsibility. When that happened that night, I had over 30 or so people out there, kids, basically, that I had to get out of LA in short order, short time. I actually was the last person to leave LA. Biggie was the last person to leave. His body didn't come home a week or two later, but I was the last one to leave that had arrived uh, with the whole trip. And I had to make sure everyone else left safely. Sean was the first one out after the killing. Via the trunk of a car, going to another airport, getting on the airport and getting home safe. Then it was time to get all these other New Yorkers home. Yes, we were wrong. We were, we, that was bad. We made some bad decisions. That was a very bad decision. And um, yeah, all those documentaries are phony and false. I get more of the truth coming from podcasts like yours, sir. So thank you and keep doing it. I get to hear more of what is real from a part of the culture that I helped to build and a part of what I witness in the culture from the young guys that are investigating and they're our new journalists. I don't think the Charlemagne's in the mornings, I don't get the truth. I can't hear the truth. I hear people stealing credits on those shows. And I hear them blacklisting other people from coming up to fight for their credits. It's all a PR plan. I look at Amazon Prime, you look at the Mary J. Blige documentary. So many people not mentioned that helped that wonderful, legendary career. Y'all need to set the record straight and give people their credit. I, for one, Mary, what happened? Dre, what happened? I did Family Affair. As we were talking about the history, a number one pop hit for a female R&B singer. Here's the example. Miss Aretha Franklin, who was over the top diva in her long career, only had two number one pop hits. Mary J has two. Kirk Burroughs and his team gave her the first one. That Dr. Dre track, I got that track. I put that together. Her brother, 15, 16 year old at the time, Bruce Miller, I said he should write it. He had the youngest voice. I know I named it Family Affair. You might have someone challenge me. Let's put on the gloves and let's go. <laughs>
Because how can you, at 10, say that you were the boss at the time when I was running everything? <laughs> Pardon me. But I just have to let that be. I ran that shop. So you have a lot of challengers that'll say, oh, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Because they're a little bit grown now, their voice is on the mic. But I'm on your mic now to say, I did it. And I want anyone that ever worked with me that think that I'm saying something that's untrue, you call me up. My number never changes. And I'll deal with you direct. 